Right. Now, let's return to our top story. Anthony Albanese refusing to stand up to China, being all buddy and friendly with Chinese President Xi Jinping. Peter Jennings is Strategic Analysis Australia Director and he joins me now. Peter, thank you so much for your time this evening. Look, this is an I'm important sure. story. The Albanese government says it's had a reset on the relationship with China. It's been boasting about that reset, proud of it, saying that they're normalising relations. But is this what normalising relations means? That when you have a <laughs> hostile act from a Chinese warship that injures one of our sailors that you don't raise it when you see the Chinese president and, in fact, you just act all chummy and pretend nothing has ever happened? It's remarkable, Shari, and, and so much for, you know, the Albanese mantra that we would push back when, when we needed to. Um, if attacking Australian sailors is not a uh, sufficient cause for the Prime Minister to complain to Xi Jinping, then I, I, I can't imagine what would be. Um, and, and here we get to the reality of this so-called stabilised relationship. It, it is that our government is going to tie itself into absolute contortions, refusing to acknowledge what average Australians know to be true, which is that China is a bully, uh, particularly under Xi Jinping, and they will continue to bully Australia and, and lots of other countries in, in the region. So I, I think the Prime Minister's performance was woeful. He, he didn't have an agenda going into APEC, but he got one uh, handed to him with this opportunity. And not simply talking to Xi Jinping, he should have gone to uh, the Canadian Prime Minister, Mr Trudeau, who's complained of similar behaviour mm. against a Canadian warship. He should have gone to the US President, the British Prime Minister, a number of others there to essentially demarche to create a sort of a broader protest on the part of countries that um, uh, happen to be members of G20 that are suffering similar hostility from the People's Liberation Army. Mm. Uh, and the fact that Albanese failed to do that just tells me that, you know, he's become very sort of lead-footed in the way that he's trying to run foreign policy. Uh, and I think it's going to be something that Australians will be um, really disappointed by. You know, yeah, it's, and concerned. it's the PM's job to stand up for our defence force when they come under attack. Yeah. I mean, look, I think initially people thought, oh, it's good that, you know, China's lifted some, not all of its trade sanctions. There's still trade sanctions in place on some beef products, on lobster, on wine. We still have an Australian, Yang Hyung Jin, uh, still in prison, wrongfully detained. But, you know, one coalition source, Peter, said to me today that Albanese is becoming a useful idiot for China. And it does look, you know, it's such a serious incident that the US... Um, the, the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee put out a statement today expressing how serious this is, this targeting of an Australian diver in international waters with sonar weapons. You know, if, if America can stand up to it, do you think Albanese is being too subservient here? Absolutely he is. And it's a puzzle to me why such a priority is being put on uh, insisting that we take Australia back into an abusive relationship with the People's Republic. Uh, the government is now at, at complete odds on what its messages should be to the business community. The message should be find other markets, find other sources of supply, don't become dependent on China. Uh, and, I, in fact, I think this is, you know, politically really silly for Albanese too because if, if average Australians can see that this is a problem and the Prime Minister's not even prepared to talk about it, they're just going to get cynical about him. They're not, they're not going to say that our bilateral relationship with China is in a brilliant state. It's not, because with the exception of those trade issues, China is not altering its more aggressive behaviour in the mm. region. Mm. Uh, and that means it's inevitable uh, we will continue to face incidents like this and worse, and other countries will too. And Australia needs to be prepared to you know, push back really hard and publicly against those things. Yeah. I mean, if there's one thing we need from our Prime Minister, it's to stand up for our sovereignty. That is the most important thing.